Encore offering of art and culture. Don't leave home without it. This is On the Table with the Green Party, and we air from um, 7 to 8 on Saturdays and from 9 to 10 on Fridays, or on YouTube whenever it's convenient for you. And please like us on Facebook. I'm Jennifer Sullivan. Today's show will expand for an hour and a half. And today, as always, we start with a piece of our Green Party platform being read by our producer, who will be um, usually is behind the glass, but uh, in the control room. But it's Josh Pritchett, also one of the co-chairs of the Green Party of Florida. Hi, I'm Josh Pritchett. I'm a member of the Hernando County Green Party, and, and I'm also one of the co-chairs of the Green Party of Florida. The arts. Freedom of artistic expression is a fundamental right and a key element in empowering communities and in moving us towards sustainability and respect for diversity. Artists can create in ways that foster healthy, non-alienating relationships between people in their daily environments, communities, and the earth. This can include both artists whose themes advocate compassion, nurturance, or cooperation, and artists whose creations unmask the often obscure connections between various forms of violence, domination, and oppression, or effectively criticize aspects of the very community that supports their artistic activity. The arts can only perform their social function if they are completely free from outside control. The Green Party supports increased funding for the arts appropriate to their essential social role at local, state, and federal le levels of government. <clears throat> Community-funded programs employing local artists to enrich their communities through public arts programs, including pu public performances, exhibitions, murals on public buildings, design or redesign of parks and public areas, storytelling and poetry reading, and publication. Education programs in the community that will energize the creativity of every community member from the youngest to the oldest, including neglected groups such as teenagers, senior citizens, prisoners, immigrants, and drug addicts. Funding and staffing to incorporate arts education to every school curriculum. We encourage local artists in the community to contribute time, experience, and resources to these efforts. For more on the Green Party support for cultural diversity and the arts, please see www.gp.org. The Art of Writing, Riviera Sun, a green author and actress from Taos, New Mexico, who is on tour in Florida promoting her novel, The Dandelion Insurrection. Next is Karina Vaco, a Florida Green, currently living in New Orleans with her Coast Guard husband, and um, her novel is Eco Punk. I'm Karina Vaco, a member of the Green Party and the author of the award-winning novel My Chemical Mountain. Greens see that our society is being systematically dumbed down, numbed down. The reason that I decided to help sponsor this TV series on the table with the Green Party is because just like the characters in My Chemical Mountain, Real people, good people, are now struggling to get by. And they are finding that they can't always trust their leaders to tell them the truth. The characters in My Chemical Mountain all took different paths to achieve justice, and justice can win out in the end, if enough of us participate in making a difference. On the Table with the Green Party is an effort to get more voices to you so that you can make your life decisions based on as much honest information as possible without the influence of corporate advertising dollars. We hope that you enjoy the discussion and that it gets you thinking about your own best interests. We also hope that you share this with your friends. Think about it, talk about it, let it make a positive difference in your life. Thank you. Okay, next, we move to some visual arts. Carla Marrera of Alaska is an artist, animal lover with a fascinating technique in watercolors and stained glass. Even myself, Jennifer Sullivan, has a watercolor piece here of a Native American woman with her children. My media is oil, acrylic, watercolor, ink, pencil, and I mostly love to do faces, painting faces in realism, painting or drawing them, and also surrealistic expression. And we have Evelyn Bryan, an artist from California, and she says, I do art because I believe that with superpowers, like super creativity and talent comes responsibility. Those responsibilities should start with social consciousness, a deep care for the planet, and a sense of social justice. Artists must express a serious desire to cut down conspicuous consumption and increase creativity toward repurposing if we have a chance of saving our precious Mother Earth. And this piece is made, this is one that I made with, uh, well, this is her saying this, 
um, Evelyn. Uh, this is uh, made with 1,000 soda can pop tops and jewelry links, eight basic notebook covers, wire shrunk, wrapped plastic, a little paper mache, and a broomstick. Kelly Toller, a 14-year-old Tampa Green whose father is a green politician here. Yes, young people, there is a party that supports you. You have a choice, the Green Party. Hello to all the TV viewers and artists out there all around the world and in Tampa Bay. I am Kelly Toller. I go to the Burnett Middle School and I am an 8th grade student there in Seffener. As you may know, I am an artist at, on DeviantArt. And if you don't know, I go by the name Dragon Drawer 102 I post most of my art onto that site and um, you can always go on and view that site at www.deviantart.com and you can search up for my name in the search bar. I make clay figurines, I do watercolor pictures, and I, most of all, for my favorites, I love drawing a lot. Here's the uh, first colored picture that I have um, drawn. It is a little bit old, but it's called Earth Dragon. As it is a dragon that's in the forest, it was sort of like a test at first, but then like after I started sketching the um, drawing out and coloring it, that's when I really got hooked onto it, and that's when it became a full, full, fully colored drawing. And for the watercolor picture that I have painted um, a couple months ago, this one is called Sunset Skyway. This one is basically about a dragon that is basically flying through a, a field of clouds during dawn or dusk. And here, um, basically, the dragon is like enjoying itself. It is peaceful and happy. And th that's basically Sunset Skyway for you. Before I show the next watercolor picture, the reason why that I do dragons the most, even though I do do a couple of other um, characters and animals. The reason why I love dragons so much is that I love how fierce they are. And I love their, um, basically their bio, like where they um, usually they originate from and what kinds there are. Like usually there's um, the wyvern from Europe and then there's the European dragon from the frost dragon. And mainly for the main reason, the reason why I love all dragons is because of how fierce they are, and how strong, and usually how they sometimes represent like goodwill and like hope. Because usually um, with dragons, like I don't like look at them as like these fierce and like dangerous, like ugly creatures. I like looking at them as like these beautiful, wonderful peaceful animals that are here to help you, not to hurt you. And so anyways, after the um, little description of, of my description of a dragon and told you dragon lovers out there, here's my next watercolor picture called Eye of the Green Dragon. This one is a little bit more recent than, previous, um, than the previous two pictures that I have done. But I was thinking of that you might be interested to see this one in my details of the uh, dragon here. Mainly, it's like a dragon that's walking through the, um, a nightly forest at night. And it's like sort of searching for its friends within a burnt and dark scene in a way. And that's basically the eye of the dragon for you. And like, at, oh, by the way, and I use um, watercolors for this um, picture here. And so that's watercolor, eye of the dragon. And then the next picture I'm going to show you is the uh, pastel picture called Sunset and Dragon Forest. It's a rather old um, pastel picture of a uh, dragon that's enjoying itself in the uh, forest here, just enjoying itself in sunbathing. And like, um, basically it's, um, that's basically what it's doing. It's just enjoying itself in a nice calm forest, no like, blood or anything like too huge or fierce. It's just peacefully sitting like a peaceful creature. And so the next thing that I'm about ready to show you is that I don't just draw and paint. I also craft clay figurines. I mostly craft clay dragons. Paris Donzi, formerly of the Chicago area, is now in Brooksville with Saturn Studio South. And we'll see some of his pieces he does, also does our t-shirt and other art, such as the show's logo. 
He is also lead guitarist that's uh, in the blues and rock genre. He'll play a song on acoustic here. Hello, my name is Perry Danzi. I'm a member of the Hernando County Green Party, the uh, Gulf Coast, Nature Coast of Florida. Um, I'm an artist, some serigraph artist, which is also screen printing, silk screen, some people know it is, and uh, some oil painting, some drawing, a little bit of everything. I uh, took a couple of years at uh, Leighton School of Art in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, one year at uh, Dayton Art Institute in Dayton, Ohio. And then I dropped out. I'm a dropout. And, uh, but I never stopped doing artwork and uh, just love it. So anyway, uh, as you see here, so a lot of my artwork is flashing by the screen. Some of it is inspired by environmental reasons. I'm totally into that environmental thing because uh, it's very important. It's a very serious issue. Also, I am inspired quite a lot by uh, Andy Warhol and, uh, and Roy Lichtenstein. And uh, as far as my screen printing goes, and... Uh, you know, my own ideas, this, you know, my own strange ideas. I'm in, heavily influenced by Salvador Dali. I've never stolen any ideas that I know of, but uh, most artists do steal, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, a natural thing. And it's uh, even Salvador Dali admitted stealing. Only he put it as, it is well to remember these men. And so that's uh, the way I look at things. Anyway, uh, this is my artwork, and uh, enjoy. Thank you very much.
videographer Julie Ferreira had made this piece of Michael Donzi, Perry's younger brother, a few months prior to his untimely death from cancer. Mike was a prolific songwriter, singer, and a multi-instrumentalist. Rest in peace, brother. We were hoping to feature my good friend Shimako Noble, who is an active green. He organizes for the Hip Hop Congress and also the U.S. Social Forum. But we'll do this in a future show. We do have a local St. Pete rap artist, Crown Dion. 
with his original piece, Jail Them, Fail Them. Struggling, every day we're struggling. 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 Every day we're
Live in studio, we have two creative local women. One is Anita Stewart, who is a well-known green activist in the area involved with numerous causes and has been elected green in the Tampa area. Did you know that she also has paintings and photography? We'll show some of her work. Second, we welcome a musician from St. Pete who has been playing in the Tampa area, this Bay Area, for years. The wonderfully talented June Bustamante. <laughs> June expands her art into social comment, and this is one of the points we will discuss. So, welcome. And, Thank um, you. Thanks. Sure. Well, um, if you'd like to make an opening statement about what you think would um, art and culture mean to you, we could start, Anita. To me, it's just a free form of expression. So, um, and it's it's a therapy of sorts too. And I feel kind of overwhelmed by everything that I'm reading about politically or what's happening in the world. I kind of sh I kind of shut myself in a little space and create something, uh, or I might grab my camera and go take some pictures. Uh, and I have more fun, actually taking the pictures and using filters and changing them up. It, it's not anything coming straight out of the camera. It's, it's playing with all of that afterwards that is the artistic part that I love. Okay, so like using your computer to, mm -hmm. to change the, okay, great. And June, what would you say about your art? Uh, I would say, uh, and I agree with Anita on definitely the therapeutic part of it. I think a lot of the artists out there would agree with that. Uh, I also see that it is a, a very, it can be used as a very strong um, educational tool, um, an inspirational tool for folks to, uh, to be able to get up and go out there in their community and um, do the things that they feel um, are right for, for their, uh, for their family, their friends, their, their environment. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel like with my uh, music, that's one of my main goals, um, I would say, is, is just to inspire, really to inspire people to, to do what they uh, love um, and to have the courage to do it. So. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's a great uh, aspect of this because I think so many people feel a little bit intimidated. Maybe because there is so much out there now that just we're being bombarded with a lot of, a lot of culture, a lot of art, but um, it seems to me that with this homogenization, with the Hollywood, with the, um, you know, the, the media being yeah. controlled by a corporate sense of direction that we're, we're getting something that isn't real. It's, it's almost too rehearsed. Well, it is too rehearsed, let's mm. just say that. And it's, it's not, to me, not real, but it's, it's repetitive. I mean, I find myself really objecting to people listening to the same, like the oldie stations. It's like, yes, this was some good music, but haven't you heard enough? But it's almost like people are comfortable. They're like going to a zone mm. of, they don't want to hear something new because it's almost disturbing. Mm -hmm. you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Mm. I think that in a lot of ways, music has become corporate, corporatized, as you, as you mentioned. And um, I, I like to listen to the oldies just like anybody else. But I like, I like mm. uh, with the music that I listen to, I like variety. I like going and seeing people like June playing mm. live music. I like seeing new people and hearing new sounds in addition to listening to the old stuff. And um, for me, uh, a, a person who has a voice or a band that plays musical instruments that ends up um, being force-fed to us over and over again on a, a corporate radio station where we're hearing the same thing over and over again. but. You have to wonder where where is the talent number one, and number two, a lot of it is engineered in a studio. So, where did that come from? To me, it's when you attach corporatism to music, um, 
it's, it's almost like it's the music came out of the studio, not out of the artist. Mm. Exactly. Mm. It's just so, yeah. And it, it's, it's almost like that. I mean, I'm talking about stations where you can actually about set your watch by the song will come on at 10 a.m. Right, right. And this one, so right. you know, what, what are your thoughts on that, June, uh, <laughs> as a real artist it's, or musician? It's an interesting thing now that we have more outlets, uh, more ways of listening to music. Um, mm -hmm. I rarely listen to the radio anymore unless it's community radio. Yeah. Um, and even then, I mean, I've gotten into things like uh, what Spotify or Pandora or all these other mm -hmm. uh, places on online streaming um, where you get to hear new artists, maybe artists that are really hidden because they're not signed to a major label, they're not part of the corporate system. Mm -hmm. So there are, um, I would say, um, there are a lot of advantages now that artists have um, That's true. when getting their music out That's there. True. So even though there is, yes, I, I agree uh, completely that there is this corporate mindset going into the regular radio stations. I notice people steering further and further away from yeah, listening to those stations go. now. Um, so there is something positive coming out of that That's as well. True. Yeah. I, I think it's just like anything else because I mean I have to where I work that's that goes on and if I put on if I try well the station <coughs> I like to listen to doesn't come in in the area I'm working mm -hmm. on so that's one thing but if I did it would almost be kind of disturbing to people like what's that we've never heard that song before what is that from Africa or it's yeah, like, yeah. and it's just to me it's like well yeah it's actually yeah, yeah. or this is Middle Eastern or something yeah me, I, yeah I like the variety I always have and I, I I guess as a I've always been out of the box even as a young person I would be back in the days and we'd have parties and we'd put an album on I would flip over that because there was always a side where the hits were on more or less I mean mm -hmm. give it be it you know, Cream or Jefferson Airplane mm -hmm. or The Doors. It was always in. There was a certain side of an album that everybody was listening to, and I would flip over to the B side, and people would, you know, but, you know, it just, so I kind of went over and took yeah. control. It was like, yeah. I'm not listening to this side yeah. anymore. I've heard enough of Woodstock, you know, I'm putting it. So I, even then I was looking for something more obscure, and the B side's a 45, so... I mean, that's, yeah. that could just be me, but I think it's interesting that you're yeah. seeing that, June, that I, more people I'm are noticing looking that. for you. Yeah, and, and also, uh, I love the oldies as well. I would say there's a nostalgia there. But also, uh, maybe, maybe I love the oldies because, um, or what you, we consider the oldies. Yeah, I, I know. know. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, but you can tell certain time periods um, in the music industry sure. were more focused on the music. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and then it progressed into this more corporate, like focused on your image, yeah. <laughs> for example, you know, and mm -hmm. it, it, it keeps going down that road, but people I think are now seeing through that. Uh, and they want, they want variety and they want something different or, right. uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, so I think that's our attraction uh -huh. to um, what we consider the oldies. Uh, is because it was written in a time period where that f the focus, the main focus, was about the yeah. music, and it wasn't about the um, um, you know the image or uh, any of the other things that are tacked on to to this day that are um, just superficial and materialistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. And I love live music and mm -hmm. a live forum to mm -hmm. to see the artist up close and personal and and feel the songs, not just right. uh, when they're recorded. Mm -hmm. right. But I love also the form of the house concert. Uh -huh. Instead that's of going nice. to mm -hmm. a huge, again, corporate building that's uh -huh. named after corporations, right. Right. and then you go in and you, you've, yeah. you've spent like $50 on a ticket or more. Or right. at least, yeah. You right. know, you're going to a house concert where you're sitting usually right. with people that you know or people mm -hmm. from your community and you're hosting the band, and they're usually staying right there mm -hmm. or close by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a way to bring the live, new, fresh, created music to the community, mm -hmm. and you don't have you can skip the corporate yeah. part of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know? just recently did a house concert, and that was the that was the feeling. It was it, it's such a wonderful, intimate space where you can 
tell your stories and sing your songs and really right. fully connect with everyone. Exactly, mm -hmm. and feel that, you know, mm -hmm. because I know that's, I've heard a lot of musicians <clears throat> say when they're playing, they can't even see the audience because of the lights yeah. and so on. Okay, we're gonna just take a quick break. I'm very excited to introduce June, singing, I mean, her creativity, her political sense, it's a gathering of spiritual activism. So um, here, without further ado, here's June. What's up with us folks? How could we be so bellicose? So eager to greet each other with a handshake and a dagger. You want to know about my morals and money? You want to know if I am from this country? We've been building private penitentiaries to house the homeless and terrorists like me. But the more we isolate, further we are from being free yeah it's hard to reach the heart when you put it under lock and key we don't need to build these prisons to keep the peace don't you know love and truth are all we really need I was raised during the days of video games, GMO grains. I learned at a young age all the strange ways to survive in this society. I could never wrap my head around certain things like the way technology could exceed our humanity, like the way we give accolades to a person's ignorance or complacency. Yeah, this was all very hard on my heart can't you see so for security I put it under a lock and key only to realize that hiding my love would only hurt me don't you know love and truth are all I really need Love will come if we're willing to use our minds without prejudice or fear. Love will come if we're willing to understand the things that don't fit our beliefs. And love will stay if we cultivate it and express it in our own way. Yeah, love will stay because it's already in us. It's a beauty that we cannot escape. What's up with us folks? How could we be so bellicose, so eager to greet each other with a handshake and a dagger? Personally, I don't care where you're from. I don't care about the money or religion. I don't care about who you choose to love as long as you are loving someone. Cause all I see is another human being with the truth all around us we gotta help each other find the key you know all this world really needs it is for me to love you and you to love me yeah all this world really needs it is for me to love you and you to love me yeah 
all this world really needs is for me to understand you and you to understand me. I've been in a romance With the reckless side of me Won't you come hide with me My misery loves your company Yeah this is the part where I confront my demons I've let them go for too long They've consumed my heart, my home My body, my throat Yeah, you are like no other First you blister, then callous me up And you bring me to higher ground Oh, three sisters Yeah, you morning shapeshifters you make me listen, you make me light You make my body earthbound You make my body earthbound Oh, and if I'm complaining that the earth's a mess Well, maybe I need to clean my own house yeah, if I'm complaining that I don't see the low, well, maybe I, I need to take a look around. Charming word twister. You broke my body, you broke me up, and you brought me to higher ground. Oh, brave daughters, yeah, you sisters and you mothers, you are the timber that holds me up. And you frame my house Yeah, you frame my house Oh, and if I'm complaining that the earth's a mess well, maybe I need to clean my own house Yeah, if I'm complaining that I don't see the low Well, maybe I need to take a look around 
Oh, if I'm complaining that the earth's a mess, oh, maybe I need to clean my own house. Oh, if I'm complaining that I don't see the low, oh, maybe I need to take a look around. Just take a look around. Yeah, you are like no other First you blister, then callous me up And you bring me to higher ground I'm not sure where my mind's gonna go, but I know you won't be in prison here. Yeah, I have been lied to, but I've taken notes, and our history is lacking truth, but I have no fear. Oh, cause some people tell me this stuff's too deep Some people tell me she might never be beat But I believe in my community Yeah, I've done my share of rebelling But this might be the first time in human history That I can actually see it happening globally yeah. Cause you you gotta educate yourself in order to see. Yeah, you, you gotta remember in order to be free. Yeah. I'm not sure where we're all gonna go, but I know a revolution has been brewing here. Yeah, we might have been lied to, but we've taken notes, and our children have been teaching us to be aware, to be aware, cause some people tell us this stuff's too deep. Some people tell us the machine might never be beat, but we believe in our unity. Yeah, we've done our fair share of inner searching, found the true value in working, and now it's time to exercise our strengths and take a leap, cause you, 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 you gotta educate yourself I've got to educate myself In order to see, in order to see yeah. you, 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 you gotta remember Oh, I've got to remember To set myself free Finally see the you in me, the you in me. Yeah. Oh, when will we finally see? Yeah, oh, when will we finally see the you in me, the you in me? Yeah, we gotta finally see. My name is Anita Stewart. I'm with the Hernando County Green Party from Florida. 
and I'm going to be discussing a few pieces of artwork and photographs. The first uh, photograph uh, is the fairy tree. I took this in 2009 uh, in Lutz, Florida, right, um, right in the yard of the lake house where I was living at the time. Um, I took this as the sun was coming up, so the shading was uh, the shading and the light were especially important in this photograph. Uh, the second photograph is called Pink Hibiscus After the Rain. I was actually able to do a close-up of this flower with my cell phone uh, right after the rain when the drops were on it. Uh, and I don't know, my phone just captured this in a beautiful way. I was kind of surprised um, at the photo. I've tried to duplicate it through painting, but have never been able to capture it like, like in this photo. So this is pink hibiscus after rain. The third photograph is roses in the bird bath. I have a bird bath in the back of my house, and these roses were from my rose bush. Again, this is another capture right from my cell phone with very little enhancement to the photo at all. A piece of art that I'm going to discuss is called the Tears of Gaza. As Operation Protective Edge was uh, taking place in Gaza this past summer of 2014, uh, I started to think about the women and the mothers especially uh, losing their children. Over 500 children were killed and many more maimed. And this face was just, it just kept coming at me and I knew I had to get it down on paper. So this was mixed media that I used uh, for Tears of Gaza and it was my impression of a mother's face uh, in total anguish, uh, crying tears of blood. The second piece of art is called Mary's Japanese Magnolia and this is a friend of mine who has a mag Japanese magnolia tree and as I went out to take a photograph of it, I just, uh, in my mind's eye, I saw many other colors involved with it. So, um, butterfly I went garden. ahead and put that down on paper. Hence, Mary's Japanese Magnolia. And the third piece of art is the butterfly garden. I actually did this in the Zentangle style. And this was um, how the butterfly looked. And with this, as in with most of the paintings that I do, I usually take a photograph first and then work on the painting itself from the photograph. So uh, hard, to hard to catch the butterflies in a photograph because they're constantly moving. I was able to get this one. And um, I did the painting a few days later. I'd like to bring up the point of how artists um, they, how they're usually at the forefront of progress and change as visionaries. How do you mm -hmm. see that as happening, Jane? Well, um, I think artists hold more power than they realize. Uh, mm -hmm. um, they are at the forefront whether they know it or not, the moment they start getting into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's true that I, I think there's a big responsibility that we we take, or I hope that we take, um, in empowering our community uh, through our art. So, uh, so I just think it's it's important for all artists to keep that in mind. Um, that there's a lot of power with what they're doing, and they can choose uh, where to steer that. Um, yeah, so you know. I mean, the, there's that responsibility, yeah. and even though it's like a, a creative and an independence of your spirit, but the, right. you know, it's kind of a power that you wield wisely. Yes, um, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> that you would hope people would, because you know, you are on stage, right? and you're performing, people are right. watching, I mean, that's right. the reality. Right, and, uh, and performance and, and visual art, um, mm -hmm. I would say all, every medium, uh, and sure. has, has, a strong impact, uh, whether the artist realizes it or not, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So, um, I'm hoping more artists realize that that it, you know, it really does. Um, power. Yeah, yeah, and it can empower, and that is that is the path I'm trying to take with right. with mine right now. But I think for me, as an artist, 
it's I have to almost craft the message that mm -hmm. I'm trying to get out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it could be from a painting, it could be writing a press release or a really good essay mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever it is I happen to be doing, I'm I'm crafting the message and I'm crafting it so people will see it, will be riveted to it, will look at it, will read it, whatever whatever the medium happens to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, um, it always involves other people. So my art is not for me. It's, mm -hmm. it's okay. for other people to see and to take action on it. Okay, so you want to use your art as an expression of stimulating and, action. Right. Mm -hmm. Like okay. it might be creative resistance, it might be go to that house concert or mm -hmm. you know here's here's an essay about this band or you know I might write um, an op-ed piece mm -hmm. because I want people to understand why I think the way right. I think about a particular topic sure. mm -hmm. and that's all art Information, sure. it's mm -hmm. all art um, so um, and yeah I agree it's a very it's a powerful thing mm -hmm. it, it's not just me talking it's me creating something so people will see or read mm -hmm. or hear or well that's mm -hmm. an, I mean media is the message is a, is a the famous famous quote and you know that's kind of the thing is that right now with that corporate it's, it, it's telling people how to think, this is the way you should think, this is the way you should, you know, with the, a TV show kind of situation, comedy, mm -hmm. where you see, oh, this is what they're wearing, this is what they're taught, how they're talking. Mm. And so that really has a lot of power to set trends. But like you were saying, June, it's, we also, at the same time, this is going on, we have the internet that is mm -hmm. opening up all new, possibilities and giving people an opportunity to just, you know, be in their own bedroom, so to speak, or literally, and right. saying, you know, or playing music or making a statement or showing some sort of, mm -hmm. you know, self, you know, graphic art, you know, production. Yeah. And that's exciting. I find mm -hmm. that very exciting. I think that's something why we have to be definitely protecting the internet, you know, the net neutrality, mm. and not let these corporations take over. Mm. Because I mean, right now we're we're very lucky in this area because we do have a radio station. It's, it's WMNF Radio, and it is something that still will play. They have, you know, the DJs are independent. And they all do whatever they really want to do for their music genre, and so you get this variety. And then we also are blessed with this is the last place in the state. This TV station is the last place that has a public forum, like we're talking right yeah. now. And it's, it's great that we have this here, but it's almost it's scary that this is the last one. Mm. So yes. I, think, I think some of the trend-setting things are interesting, too, like the creation of memes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And... and she, it, you, Jennifer, are extremely good at Meaning. creating memes uh, and taking just a couple of words and, and capturing those uh, to put out a message. Uh, and we can look at some of those memes, like some of the most recent ones that make uh -huh. us automatically think about a movement mm -hmm. like um, Black Lives Matter yes. mm -hmm. for Ferguson mm -hmm. or... Occupy or Occupy Everywhere. Right. Uh, that was another one that was a huge thing that automatically made you think of an Occupy mm -hmm. assembly going on everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the memes are really, really important. And they uh -huh. are artistic because you That's have true. to create them and then that message spreads. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely about the creator and spreading a message to all the other people yeah. mm -hmm. and that I envision think, it, yeah, that have the vision. That's part of, well, and I think that's part of the thing with the sound bites too. I mean, it, it, on one hand it can be used that it wielded in a wrong way mm -hmm. to manipulate people in the right. bad sense, but then there's the way we'd like to do it as Greens anyway would be to open the dialogue up, to expand the mind to say, wait a second, there's another Right. you know thing that's not being heard and there's right. there's a valid issue here there's mm -hmm. you know. I, th I think it's also important to uh, y you know uh, even even some artists are gonna say well this is 
this is the way I'm looking at it, and you should look at it that way as well. You know, there are some artists sure. that will do that as well, sure. and I think it's important for all of us to take in whatever that media form of art um, that we're taking in, and uh, whether it be music, visual, or whatever, and uh, have our own, kind of create our own um, uh, images to it, our own uh, interpretation, our own interpretation, our own imagination into that. You know, um, I truly believe that all of us are artists, and we uh, we just have to find the ways we choose to express um, the art itself. The so, artist. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it's it's good to you know always good to find your own interpretations, like you said. I yeah. I think. And that's, I guess that kind of leads me to the thought about like, why is the STEM, you know, we start that, that heavy, strict focus on STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, which are all good things to know. I mean, we should all be well-rounded and know that, but why this big focus that our governor, Rick Scott, has mm. on this is like, this is the way to go. Um, why would that be kind of dangerous for, students to be just focusing on those four things. Yeah, the lack of, uh, um, I don't know, there's a lack of foresight in general, I think, that that man has, but, <laughs> you know, um, I don't mean like, to, yeah. <laughs> we, all, we all know he's a criminal, he's uh, known in this, yeah, you can't hide that, but that's not our fault, it's, we didn't vote for him. It's, uh, I, I think we discussed this earlier about finding the balance of those two things, the um, science, technology, what was it? Engineering. Engineering and, and mathematics. Yeah. Um, alongside with, you know, culture and music or, and art in general. Um, it's really important to have that balance. You can't just emphasize one or the other, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and understanding yeah. in general, understanding other people. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, because there will be people that are, that are fact-based, scientific, and then there's going to be some that are, you know, like questioning, right. you know, what's the reality, and, and yeah. the visionaries. So right. Right. They, they both have to go hand in hand. I think, I think the exposure, for instance, in our schools that uh -huh. uh, kids, um, children would have to different artistic forms of expression, music, um, painting, uh, art composition, whatever it happens to be, if they if they're not exposed to that, and this these thing, you know, the curriculum like STEM is uh -huh. is force fed on them. Uh -huh. I mean, what's going to happen after that? It, if they if they don't gravitate towards STEM, do they have a learning disability all of a sudden? Yeah, or I they mean, have I don't. You know. Yeah, I don't get that because uh -huh. when when I was in school, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but you know, we we had a balance of all of those things, and now right. these so many of these uh, subjects have been removed from schools: civics, yeah. humanities, mm -hmm. uh, American government. Um, I think some schools have even taken out American history, which mm -hmm. I can't even fathom that. Or world history. Maybe or world just, history. They're just focusing on American history, which is this, um, that's mm -hmm. the only thing going. And I went to like, Roman Catholic school, so we had church history, uh -huh. which was world history, and right. regular American history. We yeah. had church to have was both. definitely involved in history. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. definitely had to have both. And, uh. and I, um, you know, I definitely loved the art classes, uh -huh. art, composition, music, any of the music classes, oh. um, hey, because when I, was I wasn't school, very good in math. <laughs> when I was in school, you know, art and recess were my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I loved reading, you know, if I could be the reader, yeah. I was, <laughs> but it was, I was as the kid raising my hand and stuff, yeah. but, you know, that was my way of participating, and, mm -hmm. but yeah, if it came to, like, yeah. math, it was like, well, I like, I can add and subtract, do the mm -hmm. basics, but. Algebra, what? I think uh, a lot of these systems are, are put into place uh, as a form of control. Uh, make I us mean, all robots. if you think about it, it's easier to control the masses if you try to just steer them in that one mold, that one direction. Um, uh, then there's, you know, freedom of expression is just an idea. 
you know, just an idea doesn't mm -hmm. become a reality, right? Because it just, yeah. because then you get stuck in this, uh, this mold that they're trying to, to put you in. So that's why art is so important yes. along with STEM. Um, uh -huh. So yes, uh, you can imagine something and then make it a reality. That's, um, I think that's something that art shows a, a lot of what you can do. Right. Uh, and STEM is, or, you know, yes. technology, uh, mathematics, all of that good stuff that uh, we should be I think we should be well-rounded and yes. um, help to saying. help to make certain things a, a reality. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I think I just rambled there. But no, what no, I no, meant there <laughs> was was yeah, there seems to be a, a, a form of control going on there. Um, yeah, limit, when, limiting, mm -hmm. and, and, and you don't want to be the other. You don't want to be the one that steps out of the box. Yeah, and, and yeah. Points out something. You know, the emperor's you know, doesn't wear clothes. Or, what's the country that they've outlawed? They outlawed music. Wow, yeah. I yeah. didn't know about yeah, that. I did not know North about African. that. I'm forgetting the name of the country, but okay. Um, what was their reason? Not good for the religions, not good, for, so uh, I mean, it's, the right. musicians were being rounded up. So I mean, mm -hmm. that's one scary aspect. You think of the book burnings mm -hmm. of, of history in different times. Mm -hmm. um, Total you know, books being taken out of know. the curriculum that used to be required reading. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's, and, and like Texas is a big one for that, where they wanted to make their own history books. And I mean, it's just, the, and then you've got the Koch brothers these millionaire, billionaire brothers that control all this wealth, and they don't seem very interested in free expression whatsoever. They mm. want everything under their thumb. They want to give money to universities and then say, well, we've donated all this money, and you're really depending on it, aren't you? So we would like to donate this to the economics department, but we're going to pick the professors, and they're going to be from the Milton Friedman School of economics, which is the Chicago School, which is a dangerous thing because that's, that's uh, ultra-capitalism, mm. which, you know, my, my, my little meme there is the uh, invisible hand of the market is picking our pockets, we, <laughs> but it's, you know. We know capitalism was a great experiment, mm -hmm. but we also know mm -hmm. that when it becomes bastardized, it doesn't work. Mm. And that's where we're at now. That's yeah. where thinking thinking people already know this. Mm -hmm. People that don't know this are still caught up in in consumer. This is just, mm -hmm. right. The They're consumer spending, this. and you know, yeah. it doesn't work. It's not going to work, and and our country is failing because of it. Making now. yeah, making the ultimate consumer. Mm -hmm. I remember reading about that in school. You know, the ultimate consumer, and this mm -hmm. is someone that just you know the, what that meant was the one that ultimately bought the product. You had all the different, you know, you had the where you maybe grew the crops and then you manufactured something out of the crop, you know, and just went through all the different stages and then you came to the ultimate consumer. Right. And the thing is, that's what places like Walmart and these stores that just push buying, shop, shop, you know, old, um, Bush was saying, you know, after 9-11, go out and shop. And it just, what a strange message yeah. that was. It's like, what? And, you, you know, know? <laughs> maybe, if, maybe if that message, I mean, it, maybe if that were shifted towards buying local or, yes, um, absolutely. you know, that's, uh, it's where, where I live in uh, St. Petersburg, there's um, a thing called Keep St. Pete Local. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'll be playing there. Uh, Saturday Localtopia, oh, okay. uh, which is where they go to Williams Park. It's it's over a hundred vendors. Um, it's all and local. that's every Saturday. Uh, no, oh. that's once a year. Oh, so this okay. is their second year oh. doing that Localtopia. Okay. Um, this Saturday from ten to five. Um, okay. oh, but it's be... it's an emphasis on mm -hmm. that. That's what the that's what that is all about. That's what Keep St. Pete Local is all about. Is okay. We're obviously not going to be getting out of consumerism anytime soon. So might as well cha change our mindset on where we're going to be putting our money. Right. Um, well, and, there's really nothing wrong with it. Yeah. I mean, we obviously have to eat. And we mm -hmm. have to, yeah, you know, buy yeah. things now and then. But I mean, it's we like do, this yeah. buying things in mass quantities, and then they sit in your closet. And then you right. have to go and you have right. to get a, a what are they those rental places sure. everywhere? They you know that's sure we're trying to place to dump everything. And yeah, I think it's I think it's important to start changing that idea of, of quantity go into quality. You know, exactly. and and, and overconsumption. Yes, yes, difference. and we. And even when it comes to food, 
you can grow your own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <what laughs> so you some of your own, yeah. Yeah, you, you can, can grow some grow of your anything. own. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. One of the big things about creative resistance is we have choices on where we can spend our money, as you as yes. you've said. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to to go to Walmart. We don't have to go to and the I Dollar don't. Tree <laughs> or any of these places. Right. But we can take our money. Uh, I mean, boycotts, divestments, and sanctions. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a huge move um, to show the corporatists right. that we mean business. Right. But it's our business, right. not their business. Right. right. And right. it's easy enough. I mean, I have not gone to BP since the, the Gulf oh, disaster. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's just, there's, I mean, I refuse to go to Exxon Mobil. Mm -hmm. I refuse to go yeah. to Chevron. I mean, it's like Shell, the, you know, the murdering. Yeah. I mean, that's just the, that's those. So I will try to go to Sitco yeah. as often as I can. And there's just, a, there's still places you can buy gas. So, yeah. I mean, the point is that there will always be some place if you take the time to look and that's where you should support. Mm -hmm. And and again, local is better. I mean, if we had a local gas company, you know, yeah. or if we could just or if do we could just do cars. alternative energy, yeah. exactly. <laughs> even, even Hopefully, better. going down that road, yeah. And, not, yeah but isn't it empowering? It's empowering to know that um, you the best vote is with your wallet. Mm -hmm. you're, you're voting with your wallet. You, you know, you always have that so, vote. Yeah, yeah and mm -hmm. it's so. your choice. So I feel like in this conversation. And actually, uh, I would say in my music, there's this reoccurring theme of balance. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to keep popping up. You know, like you said, yeah, you can't just stay completely local uh -huh. or any, you know, right. it's uh, so um, we can't just have the science, technology, mathematics, and all. You know, mm -hmm. like it has. There has to be a balance right. always. So um, I think that's what we're trying. Uh, we're striving for. Um, I think as artists, we're striving to put that message more out there. Find a balance. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the more there is to know, the more you. you yes. Know, yes. You need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. What can be done to promote more well-rounded people by including art, and music, and civics, and critical thinking, and physical ed in schools instead of just cutting them out of the because mm -hmm. of costs? I think they should be required subjects. Mm. I don't think they should just be electives in schools. The kids should be required to take so many mm. credit hours or hours, um, credit hours in college, but all the way down to grade school. And mm. these should be required classes again. We're, and we're then add the STEM in. Students. Yeah, yeah, add I mean, the STEM in. Why not? Have, yeah, you need yeah. it all. And that's the thing. And yeah. exposure to all of the things. And then when you get, you know, go on to higher education, you then you find your majors and your minors mm -hmm. and you, what you really want to delve into. But you know, you do need the disciplines of things like mathematics. Mm. There, are, there's times when you do need to know those things. Yeah. But you know, then not everybody's going to be, a, you know, theoretically is going to be a rocket scientist. All right, right. But yet, just having the exposure and then you know, have the music. Maybe you won't be a concert pianist, but mm -hmm. you will be able to go to a concert and really appreciate the music because you have some sort of background you've heard it before and you understand it and you you've heard, you know studied the musician and I mean that's that's right. a huge part of of that and to deprive students of it these days I mean the Waldorf schools the Montessori mm -hmm. schools the schools where wealthier children can afford to go they have all that right right and it's the public schools are cutting it out and it's almost like they're trying to make it's, robotic it seems like that it does seem like that Although I will say also, um, even if that were to happen, to completely get it cut out, um, just from my experience, I notice as human beings, we find our ways to express ourselves no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so no matter what they try to, uh, you know, <laughs> what direction they try to mold us into uh, or steer us into, um, even, you know, you did mention the Mont Montessori schools or uh -huh. the, the more well-to-do mm -hmm. um, folks out there that have the money to go and study the arts and make mm -hmm. that, you know. Um, uh, I, I noticed that even in the poor communities, there is, um, there are many different ways they are expressing. I mean, graffiti is one uh, of them. I was just going to say, Graffiti is graffiti. one of them. <laughs> And, I and I know what's a train you know, car without some beautiful graffiti yeah, <laughs> yeah. bridge. 
before, I mean, humankind as they began, um, they lived in the most harshest of conditions. I mean, they were hunters, gatherers, mm -hmm. you know, they probably didn't have a lot of daylight, enough mm -hmm. daylight to do mm -hmm. what they needed to do to survive. Yeah. But they did, they survived. Right. But when you go into all of these caves, all these magical, mystical, pictures on the walls and right. you know mm -hmm. they they took the time to actually their history document their, their stories mm -hmm. right. by pictures and you can see in a lot of those pictures too that they played music you could you could mm -hmm. get an accurate depiction mm -hmm of how they lived their lives at that time. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a necessity for them to do this. It's almost like a survival tool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. getting to get through hard times. It's right. it's been used many many times as a survival tool, I believe, yeah. Yeah. Well, and and that's the thing because um, Noam Chomsky has manufactured consent. That <laughs> that whole thing is kind of showing how they're the corporatizing is making this Let's make the creativity only go so far, only do what we want it to do, stay within the boundaries. But yeah, it's kind of like, a, well, like the book Dandelion Insurrection. I mean, you have these things. I, I, I always picture the, um, when you see a, a, a road and then you see cracks in it and you see things growing in that crack mm -hmm. and it's green life. And I always picture that. It's like, you know what? They can concrete over things, but really the right. human spirit Nature has a way of, you know, breaking Reclaiming through. Reclaiming any exactly, it's true. exactly. It's true. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's reassuring. Yeah, anyway. it is. It yeah. is absolutely. That's why Rivera's son called her tour, the Seeds of Change tour. Mm -hmm. You know, she's finishing up uh, on the seventh. Um, she'll be done here in Florida, but I'm sure she'll be back. And mm. and the book, if anybody hasn't um, read it, is called uh, The Dandelion Insurrection. And uh, it is about um, creativity and creative resistance and revolution and love. An amazing story. Mm. And mm -hmm. um, definitely the artist as mm -hmm. she really developed these characters. And I'd really, I told her I'd really like to see it as a play. And she said, mm -hmm. well, I'd really like to see it as a film. Yeah, and I'm waiting for that. Um, production person to show up. Yeah. So well, um, who knows? We, we may see mm -hmm. it in a full length feature film at some point. Yeah, that'd be great. And then, you know, all of our green authors, I think that's one of the takes that they have on things is like they don't like Chemical Mountain. It's showing, you know, um, these thir three young boys taking on a corporation and an evil CEO and, and that was poisoning their town. So, I mean, it what they did, they had all different reactions. One was an artist, and one was a boy genius inventor, and the other one was actually like a football star golden boy, but they all had different ways of dealing with this and taking on the corporation. So it was a, you know, but that kind of a thing, when you see that in a novel, then you've got that art that's a resistance, that's mm -hmm. showing another path. You don't have to just keep with the same mm -hmm. safe and, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to go out of the box at all right. kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So that's, and, that's what I love about art. And with those three characters, there's no way they're going to tackle resistance in the same way. No. And that's... And they, that's they're going to do three different things. And that, Exactly. And that gives us the idea that, like, you know, we don't all have to do the same thing. We don't... There's mm -hmm. no reason that we have to be doing yeah. exactly it's, the same style. Yeah, absolutely. It's many small things that, exactly. make, that make major changes. And, and yeah. to work together doesn't mean we have to be, you know, clones. It means working mm -hmm. together means I have this ability, you have this ability, you have this ability, let's combine our abilities right. and create something strong with right. that. Right. And appreciate each other's talents. Exactly. And not resist each other or be, you know, envious of each other. Oh, this person can do this better. It's like, good. If, <laughs> my feeling is if someone can do something better than me, like, yay, do it. You know, and, and that's, then, we should all be thinking this. Yeah, and then maybe, my opinion. <laughs> maybe even teaching each other if, if some, that person can do something better mm -hmm. and you want to, to mm -hmm. learn more about it. I mean, it does right. create a stronger community to be more well-rounded in certain things, so. Yeah, that's Dolan's cone, cone of learning. Some people mm -hmm. learn better by reading, some by hearing, some by doing. I mean, that's mm -hmm. one of the best ways to learn, but then the best way to learn, and often this is some, but the best way to learn is by teaching. Mm -hmm. So when you have to teach and you're in front of people and you got to, this is what I do all the time and I know how to do it, but now I've got to show you how to do it. It's really yeah. makes you learn. 
what it's you're doing. The brain. Under, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think I'd want to be the teacher. <laughs> oh. I'd rather be the artist. <laughs> uh, well, you know. I think you're. The, I think. You, you, I you think ultimately teach. Yeah. yeah I, I. I was just going to say. I think no matter what you are, the teacher, you just don't. Yeah. <laughs> you you are like, doing it. You're you the know. artist, and you don't. You know. Yeah. It's like everybody's got the artistic yeah. gift, and I mm -hmm. say use your gifts. If you if mm -hmm. you excel at something, that's what you should be doing. Right. Right. So, right. Um, so even if you're a reluctant leader, you're going to be somewhat of a leader in some yeah. aspect, and that's, that's yeah. all, it's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I love buskers. You know, yeah. I'm going to talk about that because you know when you're in a city and you see someone playing a guitar, or, I mean, how does that make you feel? Or does that? I just I I can appreciate it whether it's classical music or whether it's it's folk or whatever they happen to be doing on the street. I I lived in D C in Washington D C for eight years, so this was a typical thing in the um, you know when you went down into the metro, sure. you'd see buskers everywhere, and you might see somebody playing a violin, and then you'd get off the train and somebody would be playing Joan Baez, and you know. There was there was Saxophone. no lack yeah there was no lack of instruments or or genres mm -hmm. and I always said hey you know throw some money in the guitar case or always got you know, to you got and, to or if I had time grab a cup of coffee and listen for a while you know mm -hmm. um, but it's amazing to go back and look at some of these people that were buskers mm -hmm. on the street mm -hmm. and where how far they've come one of my favorite artists is uh, John Butler from the John Butler Trio, mm. and that's how he started out. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's one of the probably the, one of the best guitarists on the planet, mm -hmm. and he started out in, I think it was Perth, Australia, okay. busking on the street corner. Yeah, and well, now he's amazing. I mean, not too many Americans have heard of him, but he's very mm -hmm. popular and. I've heard of him. You've heard of him. Oh, well, yeah. That yeah. Make, yeah. might make a difference. I appreciate another guitarist, but have yeah. you ever done any busking? Or do yes, you? I have yes. a deep appreciation for people <laughs> who busk full time. Uh -huh. um, uh, when I was living in New York City, uh, yeah, I did busking in the subways and on mm -hmm. the sidewalks. And uh, let me tell you, it's it can be pretty challenging. Uh, and uh, what well, I mean, the, I mean, the weather. Or? There are a lot of challenges. Yeah, there yeah. are environmental challenges. Okay. <laughs> there, uh, you know, um, uh, there's sometimes the challenge of uh, you know, if you're doing it full time mm -hmm. and this is how you're making your mm -hmm. money. There can be a challenge there as well, survival. getting the attention of people. Okay. Yeah, survival. Right? Okay. <laughs> um, and and I did it. I did it for about two or three years, um, and I was I was pretty strict about what days I did it and times and things like that. I think if you if you have yourself together in that in that way you, you can you can be successful. People doing. are gonna be out right, and right. receptive. Um, but uh, yeah, so I do have a deep appreciation because of that. But also it's it it's a great uh, way to um, engage with folks as well as practice some mm -hmm. new things maybe that you didn't sure, uh, try it out yeah mm -hmm. just to try it out with folks and um, uh, mm. there's so many elements that go into busking um, that are so different than playing a concert mm -hmm. uh, I now do more concert settings house mm. concerts or larger venues and uh, where I am on a stage and mm -hmm. And busking, you are with the people, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And Surrounded. and I, that's that's actually something I have always loved about it. Uh, house concerts are similar. You are mm -hmm. with the people. You're right. you know, unless somebody's built a stage in their home. But right. um, so that is something I've I've really loved uh, with with busking. It's just a completely different environment um, it just, altogether. Oh so. yeah, it just makes the atmosphere. Yeah. It's just a. Yeah. I don't know, the air just yeah. seems to be electric when you have someone yeah. out there. Play. I mean, like, that's one of the charms of New Orleans, mm -hmm. the real New Orleans. That's not the, not the corporatized, the homogenized, right. the gentrified New Orleans. I'm talking about what's made that city, why they want to yeah. just have wealthy people there. Because the wealthy people want to be there because of that atmosphere. Right. But that atmosphere was created by 
the people that lived there in this Katrina. I mean, it's just right. like bring them back because that's the soul of that city. Right. Was mm -hmm. it the fact that they had so much of a mix yeah. and they were so, even though it was the Deep South, it was so accepting of all races, yeah. all cultures. All, I mean, it was mm -hmm. just, I mean, you got, you know, you got such phrases out of there that, you know, I mean, it just, just the fact that you, there's like 40 ways to say New Orleans. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I don't even know, I can't, I think I got to 10 at yeah. some point. But I mean, it's just the fact that that, what other city would even have that? Yeah. You know, so I mean, mm -hmm. that's the, the best of the creative cities do have buskers, do have the street musicians, the street performers, European cities. Mm. I mean, that's that's exciting. That's something that... It does create an excitement. It, yeah. does create a, it does create an electricity that maybe wasn't there before. And, yeah. and you can, and it's exciting sometimes to see how you can, you're changing the moods of the people passing by, for mm -hmm. example, or... Happy, uh, or yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it intertwines, I mean, it brings people together more because mm -hmm. You can have all different types of people stopping and watching a juggler mm -hmm. that would never stop and look at each other. They would right. just keep going. But because this juggler, now they're standing and they're engaged and they're becoming part of this. Right. So, I mean, that's where, you know, you just, I love that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. I encourage busking. Yes. <laughs> I encourage it. I do. I just, encourage yeah. it. And it's it's just you just go yeah. and and busking is yeah. it's just going out there and grabbing your guitar, your right. saxophone or whatever you're, you know, tap dancing, right. whatever it might be that you do mm -hmm. and you just go out, find a busy corner and do it. You know, right. throw out a little box and you know, please throw it a few coins. It can even be painting. I've seen people doing that yeah. recently. Yes. I've we'll seen do that. some sure. folks doing that and Absolutely. it's Absolutely. Yeah, so they do that in Quebec City a lot. Uh, oh, do they? So you'll walk the walk them. Their the roads are very narrow winding and narrow, and you'll you'll go to certain areas, and there'll be like an artist on the corner just painting. And I remember we watched my mother and I watched an artist that did the a reverse painting. You know, they start out oh. with a black canvas, right? Oh, and then scratch and then away. They do, then they do the colors on the black. So uh -huh. wherever the black is 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 the lines between oh, okay, right, right, gotcha. subject okay. or shadows, hmm. you know. And it was very interesting to mm -hmm. see it done in a, in a reverse mode like oh, that. Yeah. I mean, artists, you know, your traditional artists are going to start with a white canvas, not right. black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But see, mm -hmm. that's it, it, turning art in its head is another thing. That, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it, even like, well, I see a lot in Europe, but where they, like a statue. Mm hmm so they don't, they don't even really even do anything, but they just pose. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. stand on a little, you know, I don't know, some yeah. sort of box and just stand there, like maybe with gold paint on and just stand really still. Like a performance green. artist, is that what you're saying? Yeah, right. That's well, basically I mean, it, it's yeah. performance yeah. art. But yeah. they're just, you know, and, and people think it's a statue if you're like a tourist and you don't know that this isn't something that's just been erected mm -hmm. in this park and then all of a sudden it moves and you're like, but yeah. you know, so that and um, you know, mines. That's right. another. That's another. Right. You know, interesting. You'll see yeah. a lot of that in Europe too. Mm -hmm. A lot of yeah. the jugglers and the mm -hmm. mines and the the old fashioned. Um, you know, that you see in the old movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, acrobats. Yeah, mm -hmm. it I mean, forces you to interact. It forces you to interact no matter what. You know, yes. mm -hmm. and that's yeah. and circuses. Cirque du Soleil is yes. my favorite. There you go. In fact, better than exploiting animals. Those to people do human actually tricks. come from my ancestral home in Quebec near Bay St. Oh, Paul. Oh, really? North of Quebec mm -hmm. City. And um, I probably have relatives that I don't even know working with Cirque du Soleil. I don't know. But um, I did see them in. Um, I had an opportunity to see them in Washington, D.C. before they were huge, before uh -huh. they were big. Yeah, I know. And um, the night I went, uh, pr it was Vice President Al Gore was there huh. with his family. Oh, wow. And uh, it, was, it was so cool to see a circus like that with people, with mm -hmm. artists. And everything is art under that tent, from right. the music to the sets to what they're actually yeah, the lighting, doing, the lighting, just... everything. And everything is just like a miracle that they do, uh -huh. and no animals. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I love this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love the fact that they didn't have to exploit any animals whatsoever mm -hmm. doing that. 
Right. I mean, it's cool um, to see certain. If it's, I mean, there is this woman that does this. Um, she brings in stray cats, homeless cats, and she teaches them actually to do these tricks. They do some really kind of cool things. And so, my my daughter in New Orleans had seen this, and she comes down there once a year because she loves being in New Orleans. But she has these cats do these things. And they actually, she finds them homes, but it, it, it's not an exploitation. It's just kind of like they actually kind of like to do these things. So, I mean, it's, it's a difference. I mean, when you've got them prodding elephants with the bull hooks, and it's, I mean, mm -hmm. there's a difference between whipping the tigers and keeping them on, at bay or just having animals doing oh, something. Or giving them that a treat. A certain talent that they can do. I yeah. mean, that's, you know, that's yeah. the human drive of like exploitation. I mean, you think back, remember they had like the Russians, I think, had the bears and they had them chained. and. You know, I mean, there's there's a good way to, to you know, mm. use animals in a in a happy form, doing something that they're comfortable doing, as opposed to, you know, mm -hmm. whipping them into shape mm. and then they have to just. Oh, we hope they're comfortable doing it. We don't yeah. really know. Right, <laughs> right. But I mean, this particular woman does. I mean, it's um, and I wish I knew more about. I don't know her name. I can't. I mean, at least they're it, getting but, treats after they do that well, instead yeah, yeah. of getting whipped or anything. Oh but, no, no. Yeah. There's no. There's no. And, it, and yeah. it's nothing. I mean, they'd actually just know how. To, there's one. I guess who could climb yeah. a climb a ladder and it just they just know how to do mm -hmm. it and they have these talents and then, so that's what they do. But <laughs> so I mean, that's yeah. you know, not to say that. Okay. Okay. Um, so I guess we're going to get to wrapping it up. I know we can just talk forever about all these different different things. Time flies, right? Mm -hmm. um, so any last words you have, uh, Anita? I think um, I found my greatest expression in using art, um, photography, painting, writing uh, as a form of creative resistance and I'm going to continue doing that because it feels like the right thing to do for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I figure they can silence this, mm -hmm. but they can never silence what comes from here, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And my father used to say, um, the pen is mightier than the sword. Yes. That's he always true. said that. So That's true. I remembered that. Yeah. Dig deep. Mm -hmm. What about you, Jim? Any final words? On yeah. Uh, I just two things I think uh, that I'd like to say um, that I recently had a discussion with a good friend of mine that I thought were very important. Um, no matter what choice you make, um, do your best to make it through love and not fear. Mm. And the second thing is money is the tool, it is not the rule. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Remember those two things, and thank you to Carrie Boucher for discussing that with me from Nomad Studios. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm finding those very important in my life right now and for the community. Okay. And I think that's it. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure, and um, I, you know, I just I think that that's something that we should all try our best to delve into different types of art forms, some things that we might not even think we like. I mean, um, I've taken people to operas that were amazed that they enjoyed it. They enjoyed the theater they, of it. And, and I mean, we didn't get into dance and theater, but I mean, dance is another wonderful release of the spirit. People shouldn't be too uptight to dance. Don't feel forced to dance, but <laughs> when you feel it, just dance. It's good mm -hmm. for your soul. Mm -hmm. Thanks, and, and we will see you again.